Hello, everyone. Welcome to Most Marvelous New York City. I'm Megan. I'm JT. And just to let you know, a lot of you know me on this channel from my one minute history shorts and my travel guides, a lot of them about New York City, but some of them about other countries and cities as well. And one thing that I'm always trying to do is I'm always trying to find ways of helping people get their very best travel experiences and their very best New York City experiences. And to do this, I'm always trying to find new modes of communication. So I thought that a podcast would be a really great way of getting this information out because there's so much that it's hard to put in a video guide and definitely too much to put into a one minute video. This is brand new technology for me, so I plan to make tons of silly mistakes on this pilot episode, but I'm hoping that it will have most marvelous support from you, and any imperfections are just as fabulous as the imperfections of New York City. Lots of lovely, helpful comments, hopefully. And to... Constructive criticism. Exactly. To help you get your best New York City experience, I brought along my friend, colleague, mentor, Jonathan. Hello. Well, yeah, tell us a little bit about, about you. So I am a licensed New York City tour guide. I've been a guide for about 15 years now. We've been friends for a decade already now. Um, and I am really excited to do this because I really do think there are so many questions uh, that people have when they come to New York City, and there's not really a great place to get those kind of answers. A lot of good answers about, like, where should I go eat? But not a lot of the answers to the more basic questions that people really are thinking about, especially when they're starting their trip, planning and their trip. And because we're both tour guides, we each have at least a decade of experience in talking to the tourists, knowing what really jazzes them, what confuses them, what questions they have. So we really wanted to take these decades of experience to help you. And we thought with this very first episode, we would uh, address a question that's really a question that's the first question that people ask whenever they travel anywhere, which is, why visit? So why visit New York City? And this is a, this is a huge topic. So obviously... <laughs> There's like two reasons, pretty much. <laughs> obviously, we had to break it down. We sort of broke it down into different smaller segments, kind of a who, what, when, where, why, and how of visiting New York City. We are tour guides. No, this will be easy. I never talk for more than 30 seconds at a time. <laughs> we really like to talk. So we are holding our, we're trying to hold ourselves accountable and making sure that each segment on this episode is only five minutes. We'll, we'll see. The stopwatch, I may just throw this out the window later. <laughs> and if we go over, we were thinking of trying to hold ourselves accountable. So what do you have in your hand? <laughs> Apparently, every minute that we go over, We're well, if I go over a minute, I'm paying a dollar. If you <laughs> go over a minute... I'm also paying a dollar. Oh, just a dollar. And okay. we're, well, we're going to donate to different charities. And if you have a charity that you mm -hmm. love, please let us know because we can change this up every episode. We really want to shine a light onto different New York City charities. So mine's going to be Sing for Your Seniors, which is an organization that brings music to seniors throughout the tri state area, really. And I think that they expanded across the country during the pandemic. Oh, cool. Yeah. So it's really, really cool. I'm not going to go over time. So, I mean, do I even really need to talk <laughs> about the fact that I want my donations to go to HIAS, which uh, is an organization that actually helped my great grandparents when they came to New York City as immigrants uh, fleeing anti-Semitism in what is now Ukraine. And it helped them settle into New York and get integrated into New York and American culture. And so that's really close to my heart. That sounds like an amazing organization. They're still around. They're still doing a lot of great work. I need to I need to research them. Um, and before we get started, I also just want to mention to you that we are recording in the Welcome to Times Square studio. Times Square. Welcome to Times Square is a company. They own this giant billboard in the heart of Times Square. And the great thing about this billboard is that you can put 
your photo on this billboard. And you can use it either for personal use, for example, if you want to celebrate a birthday, if you want to do something really romantic for Valentine's Day. I personally mm, Valentine's think Day. Mm. Valentine's Day mm. is coming up. And I personally think if you're coming to New York City for the very first time and you come to Times Square <laughs> and you <laughs> enter an awesome Times surprise. Square, and you see your photo on this billboard, that is a mind-blowing experience. And it is right in the middle of Times Square. It is right there, right by the big red steps. It's really easy to find. I, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty cool. awesome. It's pretty cool. So visit Times Square Billboard to learn how you can get your face, your photo on a billboard today. And they just started allowing brands and different companies. So you can now have a QR code, your website, your contact information. So That is very cool. Check it out. Okay, so we're going to get started with our first tiny segment of Why Visit New York City, and that is, who are you as a traveler? So do you want to start? <laughs> who are you? <laughs> um, yeah, you know, what's really funny is that it, I think a lot of times people don't even think about this. This is really important in terms of deciding where you want to go. So like, I, I as a traveler, um, I'm a dad, I have two boys. And part of my philosophy in terms of travel is figuring out a place where we can find a little something for everybody involved, my wife, the two boys, myself. Um, but then I also love to travel on my own as well. So I sort of see myself both as a solo traveler who loves to explore and be flexible and kind of have my own adventures with a kind of a framework and idea of what I want to do, but a lot of improvisation and then something that's a lot more structured with my whole family. And so that really determines how I think about where we're going and what we're going to do when we get there. And as a traveler, most of my trips are taken with my friends, my female friends, and my mom. And when we travel, we tend to have less structure. We tend to like to wake up, see what the weather is, and see what kind of mood we're in. If we feel like doing nothing but sitting in a cafe... <laughs> And drinking champagne, we'll do that. If we feel like booking a tour, we'll do that. And I think that something that's really beautiful about New York City is whether you are someone who is really structured, you want to wake up at 7 a.m. and have seen 10 attractions by noon. Check. You can make that happen in New York City. But you can also wake up at noon if you want, roll out of bed, and there's going to be exciting adventure in every neighborhood, even if you didn't book some of these attractions, like the Statue mm -hmm. of Liberty Crown. You really have to book that three months in advance. Sunset at the Edge, right. seeing the, the big Broadway show at the moment. But if you didn't do that, there are still so many things that you can do. And if you want to see the Statue of Liberty, maybe you can't go up to the crown because you didn't plan ahead, but you can easily just go to the island. You can hop on the Staten Island Ferry and see Get it Get a for great free. view. Mm -hmm. You can do a dinner cruise on the harbor. And it's funny because there's a whole system set up in New York City to get last minute tickets for great Broadway shows, right? So TKTS, the whole point of that is that you're not buying that ticket in advance, but you're going to get a great discount on a ticket for that evening's or that afternoon's show. And you're still going to see great stuff. I mean, this is one of the things. I was actually talking to someone the other day and they said they came to New York City. They didn't ever think they would be a Broadway show person. And I wouldn't have ever guessed they were going to be a Broadway show person. And they said, we love it. Every time we visit, we go and see a Broadway show. And the city that they were from, they said, well, we do have a theater, right? So if you don't get tickets to the show at that theater, you've missed out. There is no other show. And that's just not the case in New York. Whether you're talking about theater or music or museums or attractions, there's so much it's almost like redundancy. New York City makes it really easy for you to do something that you want to do. It might not be the thing that you originally thought, but there's always great alternatives and opportunities along the way. Exactly. So you could be a planner like me, check everything off a month, two months, three months in advance. Or you could be super uh, sort of fly by the seat of your pants and New York City is still going to work for you. 
And you can also have a very educational experience if you wanted to come here and I don't know why you're looking at me when you go say that. to museums and like, take really history rich tours. Or you can come and never set foot in a museum and just go to shops, cafes, the, the whole nine yards. So there's really something, in my opinion, even if you want to just relax, you can go hang out in Central Park for hours and hours and hours, or you can open up your guidebook and see all of the attractions on it. Yeah, I think we I think we did it. I think we did it in under five minutes. Under five minutes. That's amazing. This is What's miraculous. Next? Okay, so our next topic is why are you traveling to New York City? And in my opinion, I put the segment here because we experience people coming to New York City for everything from solo female travel, giant student groups. Maybe they're doing something like performing in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. We have corporate groups that are coming here. They're coming here on a corporate retreat. Sometimes it's families that just want to show their kids the Statue of Liberty for the very first time. So, Or couples. Or coming couples. Coming for a special weekend getaway. Get away from the kids or... Honeymoons. Honeymoons. I've had guests. Romantic weekends for couples. I've had guests on my tours for honeymoons. So when you're planning on taking a vacation, there's always a why am I traveling? Or when even if it's not a vacation, if it's a work trip, why am I traveling? And why would people travel to New York City? Is it good for corporate groups? It sure is. <laughs> there's so many corporate groups. Every single category that you mentioned, I see regularly throughout the year. But it is true because that question really influences the kind of thinking that you're going to have about that trip. If you're traveling with kids, you're going to have one mindset. If you're traveling with uh, for a corporate event, you have a much more limited period of time, right? So you're looking for stuff that's going to fit in in two hours, in an hour, can I do this? And then sometimes you're going to be the one who's going to say, I'm organizing this big blowout dinner at the end of the conference or whatever it is. So there's all these different aspects of how that trip is going to look. And New York City seems to do pretty well for every single one of those. I don't want to necessarily call them demographics, but every single one of those traveler profiles yeah. in terms of why you're here. I find that families love it because there really is something for everyone. I came here for the very first time. I think I was in fourth grade. I'm originally from Florida, for anyone who who doesn't know. Yes, I'm not a native New Yorker, unlike JT. But I came here with my brother, and my brother's really into sports, and I'm really into theater. And we were just seeing show after show after show. And I think my brother was maybe feeling a little left out. So my mom had this idea to go to Chelsea Piers, which is a sports mega complex where my brother could do some sports. We could also go to Madison Square Garden, see a game take a tour of Madison Square Garden. There are things for every age group. I, I want to say even if you're like mobility impaired, mm -hmm. there's still ways for you to really engage with the whole city. And corporate groups, I think, love it because there is such a vast array of things that people can do if they want to run out on their own for an hour on their resting break from the hotel, they can. School groups love it. Tell us about yeah, school for school groups. groups, it really checks a lot of boxes. It's funny, though, because for the corporate, too, I've been with corporate groups and they split off. So you have one group who has an interest in one thing, another group who has an interest in another thing, and they all have destinations that they can go to. Um, and so that makes it really easy if you're if you're a corporate planner. Yeah, the, um, the school groups also, I find what's really nice about New York is we do have things that can accommodate giant groups. So if you have, we've had groups that are 600 people. <laughs> yes. I, I kid you not. Some of these bands that come in can have close to 600 people traveling, but we can get them to top of the rock. There are restaurants such as Dallas barbecue and hard rock cafe that are set up specifically for these high volume tours that are coming. Yeah, they in. are ready to go. 
So that is really fantastic because there is that sense of can-do spirit in New York City, whether it's a big group or whether you're a small group and you want something extremely customized um, and well-tailored for perhaps a uh, a super fancy kind of event. Yeah. Nobody in New York really bats an eye. Yeah. The, they've seen it all. And if you are in a the best solo, possible way, if you are a solo traveler, you can also just wander like the twisty, turny streets of the village and pop into a little hole in the wall music venue where you might see next year's Grammy Award winner or find a new delicious piece of pizza to eat. I think we did it again. I think we made it in just five under minutes. the wire. <laughs> wow. This is so exciting. I'm so impressed by us. I've often thought that when I'm out giving tours, I should just have a giant clock following me so that I'm on time. I actually am tempted to do this now. Well, I do want to say that part of being a tour guide is we do have to get people to places on time. <laughs> and we, we do do that, despite the fact that we love talking. Yeah. But we're only we're only two segments in, so we shouldn't <laughs> There's be plenty batting, of room. We shouldn't be batting ourselves on the backs too soon. So the next topic is, what is your budget? So, JT, is New York City good if you are traveling on a budget, a tight budget? I have champagne tastes, but a tap water budget. So is New York City good for me? Listen, I'm a millionaire. <laughs> um, you know, I think New York City is interesting. There are definitely ways that you can create an experience for yourself that does not break the bank when you're talking before about the statue of liberty ferry it's totally for the staten island ferry which i love totally free um doesn't even require that much advanced planning and um, there's a lot of museums that have free entry on specific evenings at certain hours so i like to say that if you want to come to new york city and you don't want to spend a lot of money it's absolutely doable it's just something that's going to require some planning there's times of the year that are better than others. I know we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but that is part of the key in terms of affordability. But there's lots of great stuff. If you ride the subway, if you do a lot of walking, if you, um, you know, maybe use an app that gets you a discounted hotel room, um, use the TKTS for the discount tickets or rush tickets or um, some of those other ways, you're going to get to see all of those marquee things in New York City. Um, for a budget price. Yeah. Can you do it and spend lots of money? Is it possible to spend a lot of money in New York City? Do we think? Why, yes, it is. <laughs> What's interesting is I did have a tour guest and his only goal was to spend as much money as possible. And what I found really interesting about this... I like people like that. What I found really interesting about this was it was surprisingly hard to spend as much money as possible without planning again, because yeah. we have things such as three Michelin star restaurants where you get, I mean, I mean, these meals are like a show. They are 11 course meals. The dessert is fireworks. You know, it's five different desserts in one. I think we've both been to one of those restaurants. Per se? I I've been to 11 Madison Park. I've not been to 11 Madison Park. I've not Park. been to Per Se. I'm very jealous. But uh, Per Se is, I think, fabulous. It's my dream to go to 11 Madison Square Park. But one of the challenges here is that you have to Getting make those reservation. reservations in advance. So these meals, they're like $350 per person. Prefix menu. You can only order prefix. There's not an a la carte menu. But you need these reservations, and the reservations can fill up three months in advance. And and they typically fill up three months in advance. You have to call the day three months exactly prior when the reservation line opens up, and you need to be one of those first first 50 callers. Exactly. Or else you're not eating on that night. you got to wait until the next day to get that window again. It's a hot so, dog cart for you if you don't right. make it to the three Michelin star restaurant. Out to the Halal guys on 6th Avenue. So these premium, what's really interesting is that the premium experiences, things such as the crown for the Statue of Liberty, a VIP tour of Empire State Building, a tour with either of us, <laughs> a meal at Mad 11 Madison Park. I think that's a three star. 
all of these, it, it is a three star. Okay, good. All of these experiences require advanced planning. So if you want the super budget, you need to plan. And if you want the super premium, you need to plan. In general, I would say most attractions are between like $30 to $45 per person. So if you're trying to budget out, unless you're getting one of those deals like New York City tourism two-for-one attractions mm-hmm. during their must-see week, you can basically plan. That's a great when. A great when are you traveling? Exactly. Travel during those promo times. So if you are just normally paying normally, I would say budget that. And then for meals, I'm usually like, I don't know, 14 to $25 per person. 14 to, so that's like how many slices of budget pizza per person? Yeah. I mean, the thing is that you can get, you can get a dollar slice of pizza. That's the thing. You can eat very well. You can get a dollar slice of pizza. You can get a hot dog. You can get a bagel. You can get a slice of cheesecake for not a lot of money. But in general, I would say if you're sitting down at a restaurant, 14 to $25 per person. But no matter what your budget is, if you are, you know, I am going all out. I want to impress people with my money. I have money. I want to spend it. You can make that happen. Or if you want to live off of dollar pizza, that is a authentic <laughs> New York City experience. It is a delicious New York City experience. You have to fold it and eat it while you're walking, though. Yeah. So, yeah, That's I would say <laughs> this is very controversial. That's a, probably a whole episode, how to, how to fold your pizza. Uh, but I think we are almost at time for that. But I would say no matter what your budget is, New York City can be for you. Is there I think a- we're cheating. I think the answer is always New York. Is that did I just unlock did I just unlock the secret of this episode? But the great We'll see. We'll see. That am I not we'll see. Well, but here's the great thing, right? Lots of people might make an excuse. I don't want to go to New York because it's too expensive. I don't want to go to New York because it's too cold. I don't want to go to New York or I'm afraid of going to New York or I don't think New York City is right for me because I have kids or uh because I can only travel this time of year. And I think that what I'm hoping this episode does is it tells everyone that no matter what your wants, needs are, that New York City is a really wonderful place to come. It has fantastic options, no matter sort of who you are or what kind of travel you're doing. And then why don't you talk to us about the different seasons in New York? Is there an off season? Let's start with that. So that's a great point. There is an off season. We're sort of in the off season. And the off season has some great reasons to be here. And I make this joke. I know there's certain groups of people who tend to show up in the off season because they're the savvy travelers. They're the people who wait until you get January, February, and they're here to take advantage of the uh, higher hotel availability, the lower room rates for the hotels. And New York City typically does some pretty special promotions during the off season. They do a two for one deal. There's the Broadway week, there's restaurant week, there's attractions week, and essentially everything's on sale January, February. Once you get to March, we start to see, for us at least, a lot of the student groups coming in. And from March to June, Um, New York City tour guides are extremely busy with those groups. And so that doesn't necessarily mean that if you're traveling solo or traveling as a couple that you would want to stay away during that period of time. Um, But it is really busy. The attraction lines, for me, I observe them being really long during spring break. That's when I personally observe the, like, several hours i have had to wait several hours to get on to statue mm-hmm. city cruises yep. that's when empire state building top of the rock all the observation deck lines are going to be long and you will be surprised how fast those broadway shows sell out because you do have when the you student have blocks groups. of 100 or 200 the the reason why people want to come in the spring is spring in new york city is really beautiful especially when you get to like april and may Oh, it is gorgeous blossoms. here. The cherry blossoms, all of the parks are just sort of vividly green. And um, New Yorkers love their parks. That is, for most New Yorkers, the local public park, whether for me, when I was living in Brooklyn, it was Prospect Park. And I just love that first day. You know, everybody is in shorts and t-shirts. It's like March 12th and all of a sudden it's 60 degrees and everybody runs out. Um, And those first few weeks of the spring is just, it's magical in New York because 
everybody is so excited um, that the the leaves are turning green and that the weather's warming up. And then there's summer. That's my favorite. I love the summer. I love the summer. We have, I'm from Florida, as I mentioned, so I love the heat. I love it. But a lot of people really hate it because it can get very swelteringly hot. But as a result, we get that New York City tourism, must-see weeks, restaurant weeks back. So you get some great deals. There's a lot of free things. There's free Shakespeare in the park. There's free concerts in the park. I just feel like everywhere you go, there's free free art. There is something exciting. There's parades. There's a new parade every single weekend. As a content creator, I'm going crazy, running around, trying to cover all of these parades. I love Pride. I think that Pride in New York City is... an incredible week. Oh, it's so wonderful. Pride makes me very, very happy. Uh, And that's in... I would actually argue that June is my favorite month in New York City. There's so much cool stuff going on in June. I think the other great thing about summer in New York City is we're not really like a lot of other cities. Like you you think of the legend of Paris. I mean, it's not a legend. It's true. There's no Parisians in Paris in August. Mm. Um, New York City does get a little quiet on the weekends in certain neighborhoods. If you're on the Upper East Side and you're looking for the billionaires walking around on a Saturday on the Upper East Side in August, you're not going to find that because they're all like in the Hamptons. (laughs) Um, But when you go to those free concerts in the park, when you go to the fireworks on 4th of July, when you go to Pride, when you go to the parades for all the other things, you see New Yorkers there. New Yorkers are not shy about taking advantage of all of these incredible free opportunities. And the free shows in the summer in New York City are unbelievable. And we have A-list celebrities in these free shows. Yeah. I I mean, it it just is, it's kind of mind-blowing. You sort of think about how much, and the other thing that I love are the free movies, the free outdoor movies in New York City. So much fun. Bryant Park is kind of the granddaddy of them all. And now everybody wants to have a free movie outside. So even if you're not staying in Midtown, you're going to be able to find one of these free movies at at night. It's just so much fun. New York City. (gasps) Sing for Your Seniors is going to get some dollars donated to them because I feel like it would be I feel like it would be a crime to talk about when to visit New York City and we don't talk about the fall and Christmas because fall many people will say that September October is the best time to come to New York City because you don't have the crowds but the weather is still on the warmer side in September and if you have spring allergies (laughs) <laughs> no pollen. <laughs> Yay! I really do. I think that the fall might be my favorite. And when you get to that September, October, and you have those those warm nights and those beautiful days, and, you know, it's funny, people don't think of New York City as the kind of place where you're going to go for foliage. But there is a huge amount of, I mean, just look at all of the photographs that people take in Central Park every year um, come fall foliage season. It is a gorgeous place, and all the parks across New York City are fantastic. Once you get, though, to the end of November... We get Christmas time! You get the busiest month. And this this is like the entire summer season in terms of visitors and in terms of intensity, and it is jammed within one spectacular month. So from Thanksgiving... All the way to New Year's Day, New York City is full throttle. And I don't love the wind, I don't love the weather, but that month of excitement is it's just like marquee. It is what New York City I kind of think does best. New York City loves to be on the world stage. They love to be right there for that Thanksgiving parade with millions of people watching all around the world. I've pretty much watched every single Macy's parade in my life. I love the parade. I've marched in the parade. Um, it, it It is just something I cannot imagine the world without. Um, and then you get to the Rockefeller Center Christmas tree. Um, you get to um, all of the ice skating rinks. You get to New Year's Eve in Times Square. It's just... 
It's magical. It is magical. I magical... didn't want to say magical. No, it is it magical. Is. It really I'll is. I'll say magical. And the thing is, as a content creator, as well as a tour guide, it is my job to experience as many of these different magical moments in the city as possible. And this past season, I actually made the choice that I was going to really focus on the content creation rather than giving tours. So it was truly my full-time job going to every pop-up or attraction that I could find. And they were almost marvelous. Oh my goodness. <laughs> but at the end of the season, on New Year's Day, I was crying. And one of the reasons why I was crying was because there was so much that I still didn't do. Because that's how much there it's is It's impossible to, do. to see everything, to do everything during that season, which is kind of great. It's and, an amazing feeling. Um, I mean, if you have that fear of missing out, it's going to be a little bit rough, but you are not going to be at a loss for fantastic stuff to do. Most marvelous stuff to do, even. <laughs> so even. really, the great thing to know is that whenever you come, New York City is great. And unlike some other cities where there truly is an off season, like I visited some places where you go in the off season and the restaurants are closed, the mm, attractions yep. are closed. It's only, you know, beach based. So when it gets cold, you don't necessarily want to be swimming in the right. water. New yep, York City. I've been there, done that too. We have seasons where there are less people. All of the attractions are still open. The restaurants are still Nothing open. Nothing closes. So yeah, when whenever you're traveling, New York City is here to welcome you. And we went way over. Sing for your seniors mm -hmm. is getting four dollars. Well, I think we're gonna. Let's be fair. I I owe my people two dollars. You'll give your people two dollars. It'll it'll be good. Or we can give them both four. We'll see. Uh, okay. So oh, you are a millionaire. I am a millionaire. <laughs> We are now going to move on to the next topic, which is where are you traveling to and from? And I find this really fascinating. It is a topic that you suggested just because depending on whether or not you're traveling from Australia and using New York City as a layover to go to California, or if you're traveling from New Jersey, it might change whether or not you decide to come to New York. So I will let you take it away. Yeah. And I think it also kind of frames the way that you're going to be looking at travel. I see so many visitors from Australia and I love the Australians because they always design these incredible itineraries. It's like they're off the island, their continent. It takes them, you know, 12 hours just to fly someplace else and they make the most of it. Um, I think the other thing, too, is to think about whether you are making this the point of your trip or one stop along the way. And I think that framing in terms of how long you're going to be here and whether you're coming back. You know, some people who come from Australia say, well, this is when I'm checking New York City off my list. And other people, if they're coming in from Connecticut or Massachusetts, they say, I'm going to come down again in the fall, or I'm going to, I'll be back. No big deal. And it really kind of changes the way that those itineraries get planned. Now, as a question, say that someone's coming from France and they have a layover in New York City. They have to, you know, sort of spend some time at JFK before they hop on a plane to go to California. Is it worth it for them to do a day trip into New York City? Or is it only worth it if you could spend several days? So there's definitely stuff that you can do in a day. You can check off some of those experiences so that you're not just sitting at the airport all day. Um, probably a little bit easier. I know this is kind of counterintuitive for a lot of folks, but if you fly into Newark in New Jersey... It's probably a little bit easier to travel into Manhattan. I agree with this. Get grab lunch in Times Square to sort of walk around, look around a little bit. Um, you can hop off the bus in Times Square, walk down to Union Square Park, down on 14th Street, walk back up again, grab a bite to eat, soak in a little bit of the city, and still get back to the airport in plenty of time. I know that's like really most people are like, that's another state. Um, but JFK can be a little bit tricky and a, a couple extra steps in the itinerary or in the logistics of it all. 
I think that if you're using public transportation, for me, Newark is the easiest. So I fully agree with that. I I tell people that. And because it is right into Midtown, you can easily explore Times Square. And I think that you and I both have worked for companies that do very specific layover tours. And if you do fly into a place like JFK and you don't want to come into Manhattan, you're right out by like Flushing, Queens, where you can experience the Queens Museum. Mm-hmm. You can see the Unisphere. Uh, oh, I think a lot of Men in Black takes yeah. place out there. And there's also... Also, if you're a fan of the U.S. Open, you're going to see the Unisphere every time you go to commercial break at the U.S. Open. Yes. And then there's so also it. the Flushing Chinatown, which is arguably the best Chinatown in New York City. Ooh, and controversial. If you're If you're like me and you grew up in an area that didn't have a lot of ethnic foods, foods other than, you know, McDonald's, being able to taste truly authentic Flushing Chinese food. is incredibly food. authentic. You get on the seven train, you can get the Ecuadorian food, you can get off at a stop and do Tibetan food. Uh, it, it, Indian food is fantastic. Um, it, it is really easy. If you're at LaGuardia, which is right by uh, Flushing, uh, if you're at JFK and you just z- kind of zip up um, north from JFK. Uh, there's also some great spots around JFK. I mean, it's a, it, you, you got to kind of know what you're doing. That's why you hire a tour guide. Yeah. And you can <laughs> get out and sort of be out in nature. That entire southern shore has some really beautiful parks where you can stand, you know, out by the ocean, in fact, even, um, and kind of stretch your legs that way. And I've had people who have never seen the ocean before who just specifically want to see the ocean in New York City because it might be their very first time seeing the ocean. But I think we're almost at time. So I am going to move us on to the next topic, which is how are you traveling to New York City? Yeah, speaking of airports. I think that this one's so interesting because I just assume that everyone's flying in And if you're flying in, you have three main airports to choose from. Mm -hmm. You have Newark, you have JFK, and you have LaGuardia. I think that they each have their advantages and their disadvantages. But it is really nice that you have three different airports to choose from. That's three opportunities to have a flight that's inexpensive and direct from wherever you're traveling. I fly my private jet into Teterboro, so I'm not sure what you're talking about. There's also one up in Westchester that... Oh, JetBlue is always trying to get me to take. <laughs> HPN is the... Yeah, there's the uh, so it's really interesting because there are a couple of alternative airports. There is an airport in Westchester. There's what used to be Stewart Air Force Base, which is just north of the city. And then there is, I think it's Republic Airport, which is just a little bit further east out on Long Island. Um, those are not really primary airports, and those are... Reg- they're going to require a lot more logistical planning in terms of getting into New York City. So I think sometimes people think like, oh, that is, that looks close to New York City. The, the website told me that was New York City Regional. Um, that is really definitely something that you want to, to kind of game plan out. So if you think, oh, I'm going to save, you know, $100 a person on these tickets, and then you realize well, there's five of us traveling, we're going to need to get an Uber XL to get into the city. And there we go. We, we probably lost half of that savings and added, especially if you're flying in to Long Island, you know, if you're traveling in from Republic, you're adding a tremendous amount of time before you get into Midtown Manhattan. So you just want to game those out, but there's a lot of other ways to get into New York city. Um, I mean, we have a lot of student groups that we've experienced that come in by bus. I think if you're traveling in by bus to New York City on your own, you're coming into Port Authority, which is right in the heart of Midtown Manhattan. Um, We have the Amtrak station, which is at Penn Station, right in the heart of Midtown Manhattan. Um, And then we do have people who might want to drive into the city. They're braver than me. So you drive. You I actually do drive. drive into the city. I, I I drive into the city all the time. I am not afraid of driving into the city. And honestly, I, I think that driving in the city is a lot easier than a lot of people 
imagine it's going to be if you have patience and you are able to sort of reduce your stress level. I mean, I've also been driving in New York City for decades, um, so I have a high comfort level. It, it can be confusing. The signage is not always great. But to be honest, it's not the driving that's an issue in New York City. It's the parking, and the parking is extraordinarily difficult. Um, the only way that you can make parking easy is to pay a tremendous amount of money to park in a garage. So I generally don't recommend that people drive into the city. If there is a family that has chosen driving like through with a personal vehicle as their best mode of transportation, what would you recommend to them? Would you recommend that they park in New Jersey? Would you recommend that they just don't drive? What what would you have in terms of words of advice? I would recommend that you budget parking and you just keep the vehicle parked the entire time. I mean, we've done that. I've when when my family travels, we will often drive someplace and we will go to a city and we just park in the hotel parking lot. We pay that money and then we travel the way we normally travel in New York, which is by foot, by public transportation, or by taxi. Um, it does not pay. I've had so many people that I've encountered. Um, say like, oh, well, I'm just going to get in the car and drive up to you and I'll be there in a half an hour. <laughs> so, no, you're not. No, you're not. You, you have nowhere to park. Parking alone, if you're, you know, if you're looking for parking, parking will easily take a half an hour um, in most neighborhoods where you're trying to, whether it's a Broadway show or museums or any of the destinations. If you try to park for a Chinatown walking tour or a Greenwich Village walking tour, forget it. Um, so what it sounds like to me is you can drive into the city, but you just have to plan ahead and, and know that it's going to be a hefty budget. And something that I just wanted to mention is a wonderful thing about New York City is that there are different modes of transportation that you can take to get here. Once you're here. I often, I shouldn't say I often, once, once I went on vacation to Sicily and the very specific place that we were staying, Taormina, didn't have a super close airport. The nearest airport, you had to take a cab from that airport. It was over an hour drive away. But in New York City, you can fly. There's two airports within the five boroughs in terms of major airports. There's Newark in New Jersey. You can take Amtrak. I like to take the jet super bus, like it's luxury oh, yeah. bus. Mm -hmm. If I'm going to Washington, D.C., I believe right now that's their only route. There's like I mega take the bus. Mega bus. Mm -hmm. There's to mega Boston, bus. Boston to D.C. Yep. There's public transportation. There's Metro North. So you can really take trains, planes, automobiles. You can probably find a hot air balloon to get you in here somewhere. And we have a lot of people who come into the city via cruise and will spend a couple of days in a hotel before or after. I'm seeing a bunch of those people a little bit later on this spring. Exactly. Um, so you can planes, trains, automobiles, and ships. So lots of, no matter how you are traveling, you can get to New York City, which is really great. Now, I'm going to, just for the sake of time, blend these last two topics together, which is what does New York City offer? I say it offers everything. Well, to be honest, there are some things. I spent last summer hiking in the Rocky Mountains, and there are not huge mountains in the city. But that said, there weren't huge mountains in Denver. Well, you have to get outside of Denver to do that. I was actually staying with family uh, in Boulder, and then we went out from there. But um, in terms of things that I like to do, the mountains, not here in the city. Easily accessible. I do a lot of hiking just outside of the city, and there are people who can get you there. If that is something that you want to do that you want to add in, you can definitely do that. But besides that, it has just about everything, whether you're looking for food, whether you're looking for culture, whether you're looking for shopping, whether you're, I, I can't even think whether you just want to relax, you want to go to a spa. Does it have a beach? I'm from Florida. I need a beach. It does have a beach. I have a favorite beach. Do you tell. That even has dolphins. I know you like your dolphins. <laughs> I do. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is something that I think really surprises a lot of people because you don't think, 
at least as a Floridian, I don't think of beaches when I think of New York City. But as I mentioned before, I've had tour groups that very specifically want to go out to Coney Island just so that they can see the ocean for the first time. And I'm like, oh, yeah, we do have beaches. There's a subway that gets you right to Coney Island. My favorite beach is actually a little bit further out, but there is a public bus that gets you to uh, Reese Park, which is an Atlantic beach. It is a gorgeous, expansive stretch of white sand with some real Atlantic waves. I actually learned how to surf out there in the Rockaways. Um, and uh, my favorite thing is that we will usually try to see a dolphin, kind of end of day, sun setting. And then the best thing about that is that once you turn to leave the beach, you walk up five steps or something like that onto the boardwalk. And once you hit the boardwalk, you're looking at the Empire State Building. And wow. if you're leaving kind of later in the evening, um, the Empire State Building is lit up and you turn back and you look at the waves crashing on the beach from the Atlantic Ocean with the Empire State Building right there. It's it's one of my favorite beaches in the world. That sounds most marvelous. It is most marvelous. Oh my goodness. The dolphins even agree. So those were our major topics for why to visit New York City. So I hope that everybody uh, got something out of that. We, I certainly loved making that list. One thing that I wanted to address is that we have these two little segments. So the first one is a little Q&A. Q so we had a question, which is... This is a very important and serious question. When I come to New York City... Will I see a rat? And will it be eating pizza? <laughs> there is, if people are not aware of this viral video, you just need to go online and look up pizza rat, maybe like NYC. And I'm pretty sure you're going to find it right up on top of that search. Um, we have rats in New York City. We do. This is a true <laughs> statement. But the, the question is, will I see the rat? I mean, have you ever seen a rat? I see lots of rats. <laughs> I see lots of rats, I feel like too. I'm almost immune to seeing... I've never been someone who, like, screams when I see a mouse or a rat. Um, no, and they don't attack you. I mean, I think that's the thing is I, I have a lot of people who come to New York City with me and they want to see a rat. They specifically say, can I see a rat? And um, I love when people tell me that right away because of, sure, we can go see a rat. I am pretty good at figuring out how to do that. There's a couple of spots, secret spots. Gotta um, book a tour. That I like to go. There's rat tours. I don't there give a are, rat tour. There are very specific rat tours. I do tours. not give a rat exclusive tour, but there are rat tours. And there's rat talk. It's like TikTok <laughs> that this guy goes around and he just showcases rats. So, it's a little much, to be honest. But So you will probably, if you want to see a rat, you'll see a rat. But I If you would don't want to see a rat, it's not like they're running all over the place. They're not going to like climb up your leg. They're not there. There are cute furry friends and there are more of them than there are us. So let's be nice to them. Have you ever seen one eating pizza? I have not. Have you ever seen one eating pizza? I've or dragging seen... a pizza slice up the stairs? I've only seen one eating Chinese food. and well, That's I also on brand. I didn't get my camera out oh! fast enough. <laughs> um, but... But it was still fame and fortune could have been yours. If you see a rat, get your camera ready because yes. you never know. These rats are auditioning for Broadway. I mean, that's why they're here. So hashtag rat talk. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Now, oh, yeah. If you have a question that you would like to ask us, we do have an email address, which is most marvelous nyc at gmail.com. Again, email us your questions. Most marvelous nyc at gmail.com and we will you, you might we will be answer famous. your questions <laughs> we'll make then, you just as famous as the pizza rat <laughs> that's for sure and then our last segment <laughs> which i did have a cool graphic for but it has disappeared oh. is a, a topic that i'm really proud of it was actually jt's suggestion <laughs> so oh i know this one this is called hypes and gripes <laughs> and in hypes and gripes i am going to hype something we and definitely we need to set the clock for this one. <laughs> JT is going to gripe something. Um, so the thing that I wanted to hype is a brand new attraction at an older attraction, which is Top of the Rock. 
So Top of the Rock is one of our major observation decks in New York City. It's many people's favorite observation deck. And they just opened up this new attraction on the observation deck. Mm -hmm. It's called The Beam. The Beam recreates a very famous photograph called Lunch Atop a Skyscraper, which a lot of people think was taken at the Empire State Building, Mm -mm -mm. but it was not. It was taken at Top of the Rock. And the beam, it recreates this metal beam that they use to help construct. I've seen people doing this. It looks great. Yeah. So it's this recreation of a beam and you can sit on it and then it it takes you up in the air. And I'm a little afraid of scary (laughs) things. Then it launches you over the side of the building. I was totally fine on it. It was really (laughs) thrilling. It turned you around. You could recreate that photograph. And it's got the view of the city behind you. Nothing else. No no glass, no bars, no anything. It's the, the picture recreated. No green screen. Exactly. It's it's really. And my understanding from talking to the people at Top of the Rock is that the beam is pretty much exactly where it was when that photograph was taken. And it's I think it's a twenty five dollar ticket add on. It's also part of the Top of the Rock VIP tour, which I think is totally worth it. It is a little pricier, but you get to go to the top of the French building. It's a garden. Yeah. And you don't have access to it any other way. You have to get invited to a fancy party to get up there otherwise yeah so i'm majorly hyping the beam so what are you griping you know this is the first podcast so people don't really know us that well but this is so on target personality wise it's really pretty funny i so you mentioned this earlier i was born here in new york city my parents are from new york city my grandparents and my great-grandparents have all lived here um there is this funny thing that like people come to New York City because they're not satisfied where they were and they come to New York City. And New York City doesn't fix it. They're still not satisfied. Um, So there's a lot of griping. uh, And I come from a family of gripers. My gripe um, is that they have put new lights on a classic New York City attraction. And I've been hearing about this for a while. I just saw it. I was driving from uh, my mom's place in Brooklyn and I drove over the Manhattan Bridge and I caught sight of the Brooklyn Bridge and they have it. You've seen this too, haven't you? I have. It is lit up and it's a little too much. It's a little too much. They cleaned the bridge and this is the funny thing is you think, oh great, they cleaned it up. They cleaned it up. It's almost like they over cleaned it and they've overlit it. That's my opinion, at least. I mean, I would be really curious for folks who are coming to visit New York City, go and check it out. Go to Brooklyn Heights, go down to the edge of the water. It's an absolutely spectacular view. Go at night and see what you think and let us know. Uh, most marvelous. Tell me the website. Tell me the marvelous. email address. Most marvelous NYC at gmail.com. Write us and let us know what you think. I think it's overlit and they didn't light the sides of it. That's the other crazy thing is light the whole darn thing and turn it down a little bit. But I was telling my son, I showed him a photograph. He said, that's the wrong color. He loves the Brooklyn Bridge. He goes to Brooklyn Heights all the time. He said, that's just wrong. It's the it's too it's too cold feeling. Um, so that is my gripe. I'm very excited that they cleaned the bridge. I'm very excited that they put new lights on it. But I think it needs just a little bit of a tweak. But go and check it out and let us know what you think. My co-creator, co-producer, who's also like behind the scenes helping out with the sound for this, his name is David. For anyone David. who doesn't know, he is awesome. He would agree with you. And he said, when, I remember we saw the Brooklyn Bridge lit up with these new lights. And he said, it looks like it's made out of alabaster. Yeah. It's just, it looks like it's made out of a different stone. So I, I'm i going to agree with your gripe. Uh, but... What I'm not griping about is the fact that I think we hit our target time. So this is really sort amazing. Most miraculous. <laughs> it's most marvelous. <laughs> I really hope that you enjoyed this. Stay tuned. Click subscribe. Oh, yes, subscribe, please do. subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Um, it helps us bring you more most marvelous content. So thank you so much for watching and have a most marvelous New York day. <laughs> <laughs>